Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Emmanuel and I'm Chuku. And this summer, my partner, Jelly, and I went to Suleja, Nigeria to do a project we call um, the FGA Suleja Digital Education Program. So this summer, um, Je and I, we did the, um, a Davis Project for Peace in a town called Suleja, Nigeria. And interestingly, the town we worked with it's also one of the places um, Sarah did her research on, so we can talk after, the, after this on the effect your, your policies had on us on, on the ground. <laughs> and um, so we did a, a variety of things and, um, and um, putting them into big categories. One of the stuff we did was um, building a digital language laboratory for the school. And, um, in doing this, this was our opportunity to show how resourceful we were. We, we provided everything there from the furniture to the projectors, and, but when it came to the computers, um, there was a problem because we couldn't really afford um, to buy new computers. So what we went was, they had a room where they abandoned some computers, so we went and, and we recycled those computers and serviced them and made them of use in our digital laboratory. So this, we also did the peer tutoring program and it was inspired by the success of the dojo here at Reed and from our understanding of the local community there, the school had a high teacher to student ratio and students just needed help with their work and it was also an opportunity for students to demonstrate leadership by tutoring others. So uh, we kicked this program off and we supervised it for quite a while. And we organized a series of workshops from, from um, the impact of digital, um, digital resources in education to the role peer tutoring could play and a lot of other things. And um, this is a scene of one of our workshops um, in the laboratory that we set up. And uh, yeah, this we're going to talk more about later. And, but I've told you what we've done, but I've not told you what and why we did what we did. So a criteria for the Davis Project was, was that we had to reflect on what peace means to us. And for us, peace means social innovation and infrastructural platform for students to strive. And the environment has to be violence free. So um, we went into this program not really, we had the theme of what we wanted to do, but we didn't, we didn't um, like, draw out all the nuances of it because we wanted it to be a collaborative effort between us and the community. So our, our rationale behind this was that um, digital resources provide this audiovisual and assistive technology that students can use and learn. And, and, but we also understood that Nigeria as a developing country, we, we, uh, we didn't really have a lot platform to just go strictly um, digital. So we had to supplement it with other programs like the peer tutoring program. And this is one of my favorite pictures because it just showed that this age group, people between the age of 12 and 17, were the perfect um, sample of people to, to um, try our program with. And this was a day when I was doing my work with my tablet in one of their classrooms, and these children asked me for it and borrowed it. I don't, I'm not sure they knew how to use the resource before then, but they were able to just um, come together around it like it's, like it's um, something interesting, which it was, and they figured out how to use it, and they started playing game. And I was impressed, and I felt like this curiosity could be actually directed towards um, educational purposes if the right um, support is given. And at the end of the day, I feel like our project is sustainable because we had the cooperation of this um, alum, alum, uh, alumni. This was a school I attended um, when I was in Nigeria, and the alumni came to support me, and they also um, hatched out a plan going forward. So our impact uh, when we did this was um, the school has about 900 people, and all of them have been exposed to to this program. Um, it's an opportunity for them to learn how to use computers and not just learn how to use computers, but use them in a sophisticated way. And because the school has a very fast turnover, we expect about 5,000 5, people to be impacted in the next half a, half a decade of this project. 
So we had a lot of challenges, and some of the challenges was that we were trying to do something very IT-oriented, and we didn't have enough materials um, to use because internet was very expensive, and most of the local shops only had things on English and French, and not much digital um, material on the local languages or other languages like like um, German, like German. So we had to find a way to go around it. And um, the next challenge, the best way I knew how to describe it was as, as a chart like this. So the school had a problem. The school is a government school, and the school had a problem getting funds from the government. And because of that, they couldn't pay the electric bill. And Nigeria has a very unreliable su power supply, so most of the power was from, um, was from ge uh, generators. And since they cannot do that, the school was in, in the dark and they couldn't feed their students, and it was just a very miserable environment to work for for us, and, but we still made do with what we had. So this was um, a scenario where we actually deviated from what we came to do a bit, and I took the opportunity as a student who left that school to go to the US to talk to them about opportunities um, in the US. And usually about six people or five people get to apply um, to um, foreign schools each year. But seeing someone that was once in their position that actually was able to conquer through that um, situation, we got 24 people to apply and about 15 people scaled through the um, hurdle of the first test. And um, that, was, that was a big, for, for us, that was a big, a big mountain because these students, we were able to encourage them to cross their own mountain. But for me, it's, the mountain was, I wanted to do something entrepreneurial with my time and um, with the right resources from the career centers and, and um, people who encouraged me, I was able to, act, we were, I was able to actually design and um, implement this with the help of my, with, of my partner. And it really encouraged me that my dreams are really achievable with the right people and the right network in place. Thank you. Um, Je will continue from where I stop. I hope you can bear with me at the last five minutes. Um, so since, I'm sorry, since Emmanuel have talked about most of the what we did part, and I will just offer a more personal reflection of the project impact on me. Emmanuel and I spent three months in federal government academy in Surija this summer. Before we left, many teachers asked us, when are, you going, when are you guys coming back again? I don't know how to reply. <laughs> Perhaps 10 years, 20 years, or never again. What about the project we've accomplished, the language lab? Would it be like the previous World Bank project, classrooms and digital devices gathering dust day after day? In short, how can I make sense of this real experience? Um, I sent a middle school student a copy of, sorry, James Joyce, A Portrait of Artist as a Young Man. I had a lot, of, a lot of conversation with him, and I was impressed by the depth of his thought. He told me he wanted to be an artist, yet I gave him a book without knowing the consequence of the book might bring to him. He's a devout Catholic, and Joyce talks about secularism. Perhaps the artist, in his sense, is incomprehensible to me. So. Is this, a, is this experience a metaphor for the difficulties in communication? Despite the uh, differ differences in cultural experience, there are also enormous contrasts between our living conditions. When I was drafting this presentation, I was sitting in the front lawn, tapping on my laptop, listening to classic music. I'm very uneasy when I think about, I think back this summer when we had to buy a generator for a consistent power supply. On the other hand, I almost feel embarrassed to talk about the differences between us and them anymore. One of the arguments surrounding the development is that knowledge is power, awareness is privilege. However, most of the privileged are unaware, of, most of the privileged are not aware of it. Thus, to acknowledge and more often criticize this privilege is one of the goals 
of a critical democratic education. Or perhaps that is all we can do about the inequality. In the future, this awareness merely serve as an or an asset to impress people in conferences or parties. Actions, after all, is too high a standard. I will omit my objection to this mindset. Perhaps to many, these objections are cliches. In contrast, some would point out that students do, in fact, take actions through par participating development projects like Davis Project. Then again, others might legitimately rem remain wary of the difficulties of truly understanding people we work with. Some years ago, World Bank implemented a project in Federal Academy. The project included a computer lab and pro projectors and smart boards for the science labs. Now, however, none of this infrastructure is in use. This, again, would be cited as the proof of the difficulties involved in development work, or more broadly, the difficulties of communication. Now, allow me to bring you back to Reed College for a moment. I think our curriculum has, in some sense, contributed to the worries of barriers of communication. Perhaps we all know Wittgenstein's argument about private language too well. Perhaps that's why we are generally introverted at Reed. Since Wittgenstein had put forth such a powerful argument, we may as well just give up trying to communicate. I had, some, I had the same concern about communication and cynicism of development when I was taking anthropology classes. But the experience in Federal Academy had a profound impact on me. Our conversations with faculties in language department confirmed our initial plan of building a language lab. The administration officials also provided us enormous support during the construction of the language laboratory. Though we encountered language barriers initially, I was able to make many friends, partly through their curious questions such as, we've watched many Kung Fu movies from China, can you show us Kung Fu? <laughs> Our project is yet finished. Last Thursday, a senior student who is applying for colleges in the US sent me an email asking questions regarding the application processes. During the fall break, we're going to send more materials to the school through mail, adding to the materials in the language laboratory. Here, I'm not trying to provide a rational argument against or, con against or concerns for communication or actions. I'm providing an experiential one, one that convinced me of the possibility of doing something substantial. Yet, this argument from the start has been undermined by my own experience, which though I so want to pass it on to you, I found it unable to do so through my writing. Perhaps you should try to experience on your own. Thank you. <laughs>